Well, hey, welcome everybody. Good to see you guys. Happy New Year. I want to welcome everybody at all of our locations and all of you who are watching online. Thanks for being with us today. We're continuing a series today called 19. And if you were like, who was so creative and clever to call it 19? That was me. You're welcome. Worked really hard on that. It's 2019. You're welcome, <laughs> right? Uh, we're going to dive into that here in uh, just a moment. We actually started this series last weekend online, and uh, if you haven't watched that, you can go online and do that and uh, catch up with us. Uh, but I want to celebrate Christmas Eve with you. Uh, just a few things. First of all, Christmas Eve weekend uh, through Monday, so Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we hosted 34 services across five locations. Um, <laughs> You're celebrating all those services. Thank you. Yeah. But, it, but here's, here's what happened. Uh, right at 17,000 people attended those services. Um, I, I want to thank uh, the thousand plus of you who volunteered and served uh, on Christmas Eve, which is just above and beyond, right? The call of duty. Thank you so much for that. And 216 people uh, got up and met with somebody because they said yes to Jesus, uh, which is just fantastic. Yeah. The other thing that I want to mention is uh, we received a special offering uh, for our partners, Welcome Home Haiti. Uh, our goal was to raise $125,000 to build five homes. Uh, we actually received $192,667, which is great, and 11 cents. I have the exact number right there. So here's what we're going to do with that. Uh, we're not going to build five uh, houses. We're going to build eight. Uh, which is great. And um, actually, uh, people in our church are going to do that. If you are interested in doing that, uh, we, we've got the teams are filling up quick, uh, but we're going to do eight different teams. And so if you want to go online and sign up for that, go to Haiti, help us build uh, those houses. Uh, you can do that this year. And so go online and, uh, and, and check that out. But uh, Christmas Eve weekend was just phenomenal. Uh, this past year's just been phenomenal in the life of our church. And uh, if I haven't told you lately... Have I told you lately that I love you? Yeah, I, I do. And, and I'm so grateful to, uh, to be here and to serve Jesus uh, with you. I'm really excited about 2019. And what I want to talk to you today uh, is about what I'm praying for you for, for 2019. Um, just so you know, I, I do pray for you regularly. And uh, there, there's many of you, we have a larger church, there's a lot of you I, I've never met, uh, but I pray for you uh, as, as you're part of, of Sun Valley. And uh, what I'm praying for you in the realm of 2019 is, is this. Um, several months ago, my wife and I were talking, and we were talking about the new year and, and kind of new season and, and all of that and what she was praying for. And um, she gave me this word that she felt like God gave her. And I started praying through that as well, and, and I believe God gave me the same word. And it's the word for our family, and it's, it's the word that I'm praying for you uh, for the new year. It's the word more. And it's not my last name, M-O-O-R-E. Uh, it's M-O-R-E. I'm praying more for you in, in 2019. Now, now, here's what I know. Um, I, I know many of us, we, we sit down, right, and we write New Year's resolutions. And you probably wrote resolutions in the realm of, of more. Uh, more health, right? You're going to lose some weight. If, if you wrote that down, I, I get that. I have similar goals. But I just want to tell you I love you, and one day you're still going to die, Okay? So that really matters, and I want, to, want you to get healthy, but I'm praying for more for you in, in, in a different realm. Uh, many of us, you, you prayed you know, for health. You also prayed for, for more wealth, and I get that too, and let me just tell you, I want that for you too. But at the end of the day, here's what more money is going to do for you. It's going to give you more choices, but in the big scheme of things, honestly, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change a whole lot. In the big scheme of things, meaning eternity and what, what life's all about. Some of you are, are, you know, resolving to have more power and prestige this year. and You're going for the corner office or whatever goals that you have, all of that. I pray more for you, but not in those categories. What I'm praying more for you this year is that you would understand God's love for you more. Because the more that you understand his love for you, the more that you will trust him. And the more that you will follow him. And the more that you will involve him in every single area of your life. I'm praying more for you in the realm of the knowledge of God in your life personally. 
I'm praying that you would have more of an understanding of God's word, the, the scriptures. I'm praying that you would have a deeper understanding of the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do in your life. I'm going to talk today about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk a lot about the Holy Spirit over the next few weeks that, that we have together. Let me just ask you this question. How many of you, um, all locations, you grew up in church? Just a show of hands. Okay, a lot of us, and I know a lot of us come from different church backgrounds. I'm going to make some statements here. If you're not a church person, you won't understand what I'm about to say in the next few minutes, but that's all right. Just hang with me. Uh, in the realm of church, uh, here's what's happened when it comes to the, to the Holy Spirit. It's like sometime, somewhere uh, in the realm of churches, we divorced uh, the Word and, and the Holy Spirit. It's, it's like we separated those two things. And so there are some churches uh, that are very Holy spirit oriented. If, if you want church words for that, we call those charismatic churches. A lot of people that are not involved in charismatic churches think charismatic churches are a little bit crazy and holy rollers and they do crazy things. And, that, and that's one group, right? They're the Holy Spirit churches. And then there's other churches that are word churches. To be real blunt, this is more like Sun Valley. They're, they're Bible churches. And so, so there's a, a deep commitment to the Bible and the teachings of the Bible. But in a lot of those churches, there's just they're just dead, right? I mean, they, they know the Bible, but there's no life around it. They're like part of the frozen chosen. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And what we've done in the church world at large is we've separated the Word and the Spirit. And some have gone with mom and some have gone with dad. Let me just tell you, God never intended those two things to be separated. And one of the things that I've been convicted about here in our church is to make sure we marry those things in 2019. Because here's the reality. God's Word is His truth. And we need to know his word. And it's the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that wants to work inside you and me to make his word come alive inside of us and transform us and, and change us. I'm praying for you more this year in the realm of the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying that you would experience change in your life this year, but not change in the realm of New Year's resolutions. I'm praying something supernatural for you. Hear that word, supernatural for you. I'm praying in your life that you would experience radical transformation. Let me show you this verse of scripture. I shared it last week when we did the online service again. If you didn't see that, you can go online and watch it. This is 2 Corinthians 5.17 as it comes here on the screen. Look at what your Bible says. And I share this verse fairly regularly here in our church. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if anyone is, read the next two words out loud with me, is, read those next two words with me, in Christ. That's the key here. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the, what's the next word? New is here. What God wants to do in your life, because he has something new for you in 2019, but here's what he wants to do. He wants to create you into something different than you are. That's a supernatural thing. Think about this with me. Anybody in the world, whether they know Jesus or not, can put together some New Year's resolutions and try harder and do better. Think with me. The Christian life is actually not about trying to be a good person, trying harder, doing better. The Christian life is about the power of God's Spirit working in you and me to create something new in us. That's not a try harder, do better thing. That's a supernatural transformation thing. A new creation. Some of us this year, you know, we want the old to be gone. And every year we've written it down. You know, I'm not going to do this. I am going to do this. And every year it's like we just go through the same things. Here's what God wants for you. You ready? Here's what I'm praying for you. More. More of an understanding of the word of God and more of the work of his spirit in your life. And so let's talk about that today. Here's where we're going to be. If you brought your Bible, turn to John chapter 14. I'm going to show you a few verses in John 14. And then in John 15, that's in your New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And as you're turning there, know this, God wants to do something new in you. He wants to create something new in you. And, and let me just tell you this, as you think about the new year and you think about what really matters, listen, health-wise, yes, get thinner, you know, do your thing, exercise, all, all of that, but one day you're going to die. Uh, more money, yes, that would be great, that would give you more choices, but ultimately that's not going to matter. If you get the corner office, that's great, and it's going to give you a little power, a little more prestige, I want that for you, I hope you have more influence. But at the end of the day, here's all that matters, you ready? It's God and people. When you get to the end of your life, that's the only thing that's going to count. 
your relationship with God and your relationship with people. The more that God has for you, the more that he wants to do for you in the realm of understanding his word and through the power of, of, of the spirit is, is he wants to make you, take you to a place, make you healthier, give you healthier relationships because that's what life is all about. In the end, all that matters is, is God and people. Um, I, I had this moment uh, the other day and um, I think of my life in the realm of, of seven years. I think of seven year stints. And, and so this past year was, was the end of, of the previous seven years in the way that I've kind of sectioned it out. And so um, I, I had this moment, and it was early in the morning, and I was doing my prayer time, and I was just going through because I had some goals in that seven-year time. Anybody else goal people? You write things down? Okay, I, I, I do that. And, and so um, I, I went through there, and, and God um, has really blessed me the past seven years. And I had some things for the church and some things personally and, and, and all of that. And, and God in his grace, you know, all of them were surpassed. I just had this moment and I was, I was thanking God in, in, in the prayer time. And, and then it just kind of hit me. Um, none of those things matter in, in the realm of goal and, and achievement. None of those things matter if my wife's not with me. If my relationship with her is not solid. None of those things matter if, if I don't have a good relationship with my boys. None of those things matter to me if I don't have a good relationship with, with you. And I just had this moment, and, and I have a little office at, at my house, and I felt like God was like, you need to tell your wife this, right? So I just, I called her in, and I'm like, babe, you know, here's what God's done the past seven years. I don't know if you've thought about it, but, you know, this, 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 and this. And I just told her, none of it matters without you. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is God and people. And, and I hope that as you have thought about the new year, and as you've thought about goals, and as you've thought about resolutions, I hope relationships are a part of that. Because quite frankly, in the end, that's, that's all that counts. And I want more for you in that room. Because God wants more for you in that room. And a deeper understanding of his word. And he wants you to experience the power of his spirit. Look with me here. John chapter 14. Here's, here's what's up. Jesus is actually getting ready to exit. And he's preparing his disciples for that. He knows he's going to go to the cross. He knows he's going to rise again. He's getting ready for that. And in your Bible, so John 14, 15, and I would encourage you this week, if you want to read these chapters, John 14, 15, I'm going to add chapter 16 as well. Uh, Jesus is preparing his disciples for, for that exit. And he's, he's teaching them. Um, just so you know, when the Bible was originally written, there were no chapters and verses. We added those later so that we could look things up. Make sense? And so in John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his exit. And he's telling him, them things that God's going to do. And he's telling them what's about to happen. And he's preparing them. And he starts talking about the Holy Spirit. Look at this. John chapter 14, verse 25. Jesus says, all this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now think about this for a minute. Jesus says, I'm going to be leaving. He tells his followers that. But you're going to be okay because God's going to send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, and he's going to teach you some new things, and he's going to remind you of what I've taught you. He's going to, he's going to guide you in your life. Quickly, think with me. Um, the Bible talks about the Trinity. In fact, in John 14, 15, and 16, in these chapters I just mentioned, uh, the Trinity is, is there. Now, the word Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. That's a theological term, but you see the Trinity expressed in the, in the Scriptures. And so I'm going to give the illustration that I normally give, and it's the best one I got, because when we talk about the Trinity, we're trying to explain something that is unexplainable. We're trying to fathom something that our minds cannot possibly wrap around. But the Bible teaches that there's one God, but he's expressed in, hear this word, three persons. One God, three persons. So you have God the Father, you have God the Son, and you have God the Holy, Holy Spirit. 
Three persons, one God. Now, here's the thing in a lot of churches, like ours here at Sun Valley, uh, God the Father gets a lot of attention. God the Son, Jesus, gets a lot of attention. But the Holy Spirit doesn't get a lot of attention. But did you just catch what Jesus just said? He said, I'm going to leave you followers of me, but you're going to be okay because you're going to get an advocate. You're going to get the Holy Spirit, and he's going to guide you, and he's going to remind you, he's going to teach you, he's going to lead you in, in, your, in your life. And he's a person. When I was a kid and they talked about the Holy Spirit in my church, they would say the Holy Ghost. And that always freaked me out because when you think ghost, you don't think person. You think like spirit and weird and all that. But the Bible teaches that he's a person. In fact, he's a person like God the Father and Jesus. He's just God the Holy Spirit. Now, when you think about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, here's the illustration I always give. You don't think addition, one plus one plus one equals three. You think multiplication. One times one times one equals what? One, one God expressed in three persons. But here's the deal, lean in. This is why that's such a big deal. The Holy Spirit is now our guide. Jesus is gone. One day he's going to return. But in this world right now, the Holy Spirit is your, is your guide. The Holy Spirit connects us to God the Father and God the Son. Right now, when you talk to God, the Bible teaches it's the Holy Spirit that communicates to God the Father for you. Why? He's your advocate. When you're prompted to do something on the inside, or you're reading the Bible, and, and, and something prompts you, that's the work of the Holy Spirit in, in, in your life. And so again, one of the things I'm praying for you this year is more of the Holy Spirit for you, more of an understanding of who He is, because He's part of the Trinity. He connects us to the network. If you have a cell phone, and it's not connected to the network, it's basically dead. For it to come on, for it to work, it connects you to the network. That's the Holy Spirit. Now catch this. The Holy Spirit connects you to God the Father and God the Son. The Holy Spirit also connects us to each other. There's a supernatural thing that the Holy Spirit wants to do in your relationship with God and in your relationship with people. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you're sitting in a service like this one and somebody's talking, and even though it's like one person on thousands of people, right, it was like whoever it was that was speaking was talking directly to you. And you thought to yourself, did somebody tell him? Did my wife talk to him? Did my husband talk to him? Did, does he know what's going on in my life? You had that kind of thing. But reality is... Whoever was talking didn't know any of these things. I can't tell you how many times through the years in my time here at Sun Valley and in other places where I've served, people have been like, did my wife tell you? Did my friend tell you? Do you know what's going on? No. What happens is in that moment, the Holy Spirit, that's not talent or information. That's a gift from the Holy Spirit where in that moment, whoever is speaking is connecting right with you because God loves you, God cares for you, and the Holy Spirit in that moment is working in your life. If you're here today and you've said yes to Jesus, the reason that you were convicted to say yes to Jesus in the first place wasn't the talent of the communicator. It was the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life because God loves you. He's made a way for you in Jesus and the Holy Spirit drew you in. The Holy Spirit is one of the persons of the Trinity. And what we want to do is we want to connect the Spirit to the Word so that He can teach us and guide us in the stuff of everyday life. There are decisions right now that many of you need to make in the realm of dating, in the realm of what job you're going to take, in a decision you need to make about your kid, on and on and on and on it goes. And you're going, well, you told me to follow the Bible. The Bible's not telling me who to marry. The Bible's not telling me which job to take. The Bible's not telling me what to do in this particular situation about my kid because they didn't have Fortnite way back when, right? You got all that going on, but here's the reality. The Holy Spirit will take the principles and truths of the Bible and give you direct direction and guidance in your life. Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, and he's saying, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to give you some peace, and it's the direction and the teaching and the reminding and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He continues to teach about these things, and then he says this. Look at this. John chapter 15 beginning in verse 4. Remember, because all of this goes together. And the new God wants to do in you and your life this year is in the realm of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says this, John 15, 4. He says, remain in me as I also remain in you. Well, how does that work? Here's how it works. The Holy Spirit. Because when you receive Jesus, you receive his Holy Spirit into your life. So literally, he is in you and you are in him because the Spirit connects you to the network. Jesus goes on. He says, no branch could bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. 
If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do, what's the next word? Nothing. Now, I mentioned this a moment ago, but think with me. Anybody in the world can try harder, do better, put down some new resolutions and say, I'm going to have better habits this year. You don't need Jesus for that. Does this make sense? But you know what the shocking thing is? A bunch of us who are Jesus followers is we're trying to live the Christian life without Jesus Christ. It's like we've left him out of it. Just so you know, that's what religion is. There's no power in religion. Because religion is about self-effort. Religion is about you and I saving ourselves. Religion is about you and I try harder, do better. Christianity is about a supernatural experience with God through the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's something totally different. There's a bunch of us, we think the goal of the Christian life is to be a better person. That's not the goal of the Christian life. Try hard to do better. That's not the goal of the Christian life. The goal of the Christian life is to remain in Jesus. That's it. Because without Jesus, you can do, we all said it a moment ago, nothing. One of the reasons why religious people are so frustrated and mean is because they're trying to produce something that they don't have. Does this make sense? Because in their mind, and in their heart, there's no power. There's no supernatural experience. And yet they know they're supposed to be holy. They're supposed to try it, you know, they're supposed to be good and all that. And so it's this constantly frustrating experience because there's no power behind it. There's a bunch of us here today that that's your experience in the Christian life. Because you've never understood what it means to tap into the power. In essence, you're dead wood, Right? You're just this piece of wood over here not connected to any life or, or, or nourishment. Religion is, I can't produce the fruit, so I'm going to tie a piece of fruit onto my life, and then the wind blows and it falls off every year. Here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. The Christian life is about connecting to Jesus Christ. I think we're the only faith on the planet that forgets its founder. It's about connecting to Jesus. It's about experiencing his power through the power of his spirit as we remain in him and he remains in us. If you want the Jesus fruit, you got to stay connected to the Jesus vine. Does this make sense? Apple trees produce apples. That's why it's an apple tree. Religion is an apple tree going, I think I'll do oranges this year. And the apple tree tries really, really hard. No oranges. Because an apple tree produces what? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. You know what we need? We don't need puny resolutions. We need powerful repentance. Like a 180 in the way that we're thinking about these things. And I'm praying that for you. And I'm praying that for me. And I'm praying that for our church. Because God wants to do something supernatural in you. Jesus continues. Look at this. He says in verse 9. As the Father, as the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Read the next sentence with me out loud, would you? I just loved you beginning with now. Read it with me. Now remain in my love. Let's read it again. Now remain in my love. Verse 10, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that, look at these words, my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. So here's what we've got. If you're not connected to the vine, you're dead wood. There's not going to be any supernatural fruit. Because Jesus says, without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. He says, so here's what you do. He says, you remain in my love. And if we remain in his love, his love will begin to be evident in our life. And catch this, and our joy will be made complete. Now let me ask you a question. How good would it be for your joy 
to be made complete. You know what the word complete means? It means without lack. It means there's nothing missing. Did you know this is God's will for you? That you're so connected to Jesus, you're so connected to the supernatural power, you have such a deep understanding of God's love for you, and you're remaining in it in, in such a way that you are full of his joy. This is, this is God's will for you. This is what he desires for you. So let me talk to you about how to do it. How do we remain in Christ? What does that look like and how does that work? See, the Christian life is all about receiving and giving. Staying connected. Receiving and giving. It's about receiving and giving. If you want, you can do the hand motions with me. You ready? Okay. Receive and give. And a couple of you are like, I'm not doing that. Okay, it's okay. But it's about receiving and giving. And again, religious people are so frustrated because they're trying to give something they've never received. Just think about how frustrating that would be. And so every time giving is talked about in church, whether it's in the realm of money or love or service or time or talent, everybody's all frustrated. Why? Because they haven't received. Joy be made complete. That means that we've connected to God and the supernatural vine through the power of the Spirit in such a way that our cup runs over. That's what the word complete means. We receive and then give. We receive his love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then we live that out in our relationships. We receive and give. Here's how it works. Several things here in your notes. If you're new, you got notes when you came in today. They're in your program. You can also take notes on the Sun Valley app. Remaining in Christ. Let me give you four things. Number one here in your notes. To remain in Christ is to be led by the Spirit. Notice the capital S. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. To remain in Christ is to be led by the Spirit. I'm going to talk about this a lot next weekend. Uh, what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? What does it mean to be led by the Spirit? Because what God wants to do is he wants to teach you his word, and then he wants to supernaturally empower you to live it out by the Holy Spirit. The word and the Spirit were never mean to be separate. They're always together. Uh, by the way, if you come from a background like mine, just think about this. You don't have the word without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense? The Holy Spirit gave it, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to live it out. And those two things go together. To remain in Jesus is to be led by the Spirit. It's to be connected. If you want the Jesus fruit, you've got to stay connected to the Jesus Vine. To remain in Christ is to be led by the Spirit. When Jesus is talking about this, he's talking about it in the realm of the Holy Spirit. If you want, you can read John 14, 15, 16 this week. You will see it. It is woven all the way through. So how do you do that? Number two. So to be led by the Spirit, to remain in Jesus. Number two. You train to remain in your brain. You train to remain in your brain. It's about focus. I talk about this a lot here in our church. Focus is a big, big deal. What you focus on is what you move towards. You train to remain in your, in your brain. What you focus on is what you move towards. Now, I talked about this a little bit uh, last weekend when we did the online service, and I got a message through Twitter uh, from a mom whose uh, four-year-old daughter, her name's Addison, uh, watch the online service with her. And Addison really got this point, and so I'm going to allow her to make it to you today. This is Addison. Check this out. Now hocus pocus is focus. Now hocus pocus is focus. Now hocus pocus is focus. Just take a moment and give Addison a hand for a second. Okay, I said this last week, I've said it before in our church, but usually when we think about the Holy Spirit, we do think hocus pocus. And some of you right now, you're like, oh, is my pastor getting charismatic? A little bit. A little bit. But we need more of the Spirit in our lives. But usually we think hocus pocus. It's not. It's focus. It's remaining in Jesus. Catch this. It's marinating our minds in the truth of God's Word. And the more that we soak in it, the more that the Spirit will produce it in our lives. Does this make sense? As Addison said, right, it's not hocus pocus, it's focus. That's the way it works. You train to remain in your brain. Think with me. So the Christian life is not about trying. Because trying is separate from the vine. 
to be connected to the vine, to be connected to the power source. It's not trying, it's trusting. And how do we trust? Here's what we do. We train. Where do we train? We train to remain in our brain. Let me quote you this verse of Scripture, Romans 8, 5. You can jot it down, maybe look it up this week. be a great verse to memorize. Here's what Romans 8, 5 says. It says, those who have their minds set on the things of the Holy Spirit, those people produce what the Holy Spirit desires. Those who have their minds set on the things of the sinful nature produce what the sinful nature desires. What does that verse mean? It means what Addison said. It's not hocus pocus. It's what? It's focus. Train to remain in your brain. This is how it works. Listen close. The Christian life is never about earning. It's all grace. Everybody hear that? It's all grace. So you can't earn brownie points with, with God. So when you come to church, it's not about earning, it's about training. It's not about earning, but learning. When you get in a small group, it's not about earning, but learning. It's about training. When you read the Bible in the morning, or you do the Sun Valley app, or you pray, it's not about earning, but about learning. It's about training. You train to remain in your brain. Think with me. Here's what training is. Training is doing what you can do today, so that in the future you'll be able to do what you can't do today. Did you catch that? It's doing what you can do today, so in the future you'll be able to do what you can't do today. Okay? Now, here's what I know. There's thousands of us here this weekend, right? Like two of you, I know this year, one of your goals is you signed up to run a marathon. Okay? I was talking to a couple of guys. If you saw them, you'd be like, they can't run a marathon. And here's my response. That's true. They can't run a marathon yet. But here's what they're committed to doing. They're going to do what they can do today, so in the future, they'll be able to do what they can't do today. You know what you call that? Training. And so they're going to build on it and build on it and build on it. And in the future, sometime this next year, they're going to run a marathon. Why? Not through trying, because trying wouldn't have got them there, but through training. Here's what you do when you come to church, right? You're doing it at this moment. You're soaking it in. You're being connected right now. You're hearing the truth of Scripture, and, it, and, it, and it's coming in. And the more that you marinate on that, the more that you train it, the more that you work it in your life, because God works it in and we work it out. God works it in and we work it out. We receive, right? And then we give that away because all of this is relational. That's what life's about. Holiness is relational. It's how we love God and how we love others. God works it in and we work it out. The more that you soak that up, the more it'll be evident in your life. The more that you think about the things of God, the more it'll be evident in your life. The more that you put the things of God in your life, the more the Holy Spirit will trigger you at certain moments to let you know when you're supposed to do certain things. The more that you get to know God's Word, catch this, the more God's Word will get inside of you. How do I know when God's speaking? Get in God's Word, and God's Word will get in you, and the Holy Spirit will get to prompt you and, and, and lead you. Well, how does this work, Pastor Chad? How does this work? Well, let Addison tell us one more time. Here she is. Watch this. Not hocus pocus, it's focus. All right, thank you. I just want to say that one more time because I thought it was super cute. Does this make sense to you? Okay. What I want to challenge you to do as we go into this new year, commit yourself to that training. You're not earning, you're committing yourself to learning, and when you learn, you'll begin to see what God sees, and when you see what God sees, you'll do what God says. Think. The word repent literally means to change your thinking. I thought it was about actions. Jesus is smarter than that. Jesus knows that there'll be no permanent change in your actions until there is a permanent change in your thinking. You see what God sees, you'll do what God says. It's not hocus pocus, it's focus. And the more that you allow that in your heart and mind and life, the more that it'll show up. Which brings us to number three. Good roots grow good fruits. Good roots grow good fruits. An apple tree will not produce oranges because it's an apple tree. The supernatural transformation God wants to do in your life is you have some beliefs, I have some beliefs, we have some beliefs, we have some things that are wrong, we believe some lies, and what God wants to do is he wants to uproot that and he wants to plant some truth, and I'm telling you, it'll grow into something different in your life. Most of us think our problems are external. They're not, they're internal. Well, you don't know him. Okay. If you've got a him in your life that is your big problem, and you're like, the problem is him. There's a bunch of decisions you made to get to him, and those decisions came from you. Does this make sense? 
I talk to people all the time. They move from one place in the country to another, and they think they've left all their problems. And guess what? The same problems show up in the new space. You know why that is? Because wherever you go, that's where you are. Is everybody tracking with me? There are things that we think. There are things that we send out. There are things going on in the side, inside of us that are rooted in us, and they come from different things, family of origin, because we believe lies of the world and the culture and all kinds of things. God wants to uproot those. He wants to help us see what he sees. When we see what he sees, we'll begin to change. We'll begin to trust him. It'll transform us from the inside out. The problem's not the fruit. Everybody's focused on the fruit. The problem's the root. This is why you want to train to remain in your brain. You want to fill yourself up with truth all the time. And the Holy Spirit will begin to work in your life. You'll see things differently and then you'll have different actions. This is how the Christian life works. It's not about trying, but trusting and trusting through training. And when we trust and train, our brain changes. And that changes our life. We see it different. He's transforming us into a new creation. And here's the goal, number four. Jesus wants to complete your joy. Jesus wants to complete your joy. That's his desire for you. When he talks about abundant life, when he talks about all that he has for you, when he talks about wanting to bless you, it's about joy. Joy's about relationships. Great relationships come from great character, and he wants to transform you from a character side, from the inside out. And this is how it works. Connected to the vine, learning from him, supernaturally empowered to live for him so that his joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. So here's what I want to invite you to do, all right? We got New Year's resolutions for the gym and for our finances and all kinds of things. I'm going to ask you to commit to training this year. Train. See what God does. Give him the opportunity to work in and through your life. First thing I want to ask you to do, keep coming to church, all right? I'm going to end this series called 19 next weekend. I'm going to talk about how to walk by the Spirit, and then we're going to do a series called Gifted, and I'm going to spend those weeks talking about the Holy Spirit and how He wants to work in us and through us. Commit to being there, all right? Getting God's Word every day. If that's a new thing for you, download the Sun Valley app Monday through Friday. There's a devotional. Just do that. Get in it. Third thing I'm going to ask you to do to train is get in a group. When we start the Gifted series, okay, I'm going to ask you to commit to being in a group for like six weeks. There's a Crystal clear on-ramp and off-ramp, okay? But get in a group and see what God does. Here's how you get in a group. You can sign up online at groups.sv.cc. Also, at all of our locations this weekend, uh, there's a place in the lobby where you can ask people about groups. Uh, I want to encourage you to do this. If you're willing, would you host a group? Uh, You don't have to be like a big Bible teacher or any of that. Uh, We provided some videos for you. And so you just play those, and then you have some discussion questions. But you can invite people to your home and host a group if you'd be willing to do that. You can sign up on the same website, sign up at the uh, tables in the, in the lobby. And on top of that, everybody get in a group. We'll go on this journey over the next few weeks. We'll start in a couple of weeks when we begin that series, Gifted, and we'll see what God does. All right? Okay, listen. I'm praying for more for you. Open yourself up to it. Allow yourself to begin to train in it and see what God does in your life, okay? I love you. Happy New Year. Let me pray for you. Let's pray together. Father, give us wisdom of these things. Help us to see what you see. As we go on this journey over the next several weeks, I pray that you would guide us. Uh, For many of us, these are going to be some brand new things. Um, And I pray we would be open. Father, for many of us, for for a long time, it's uh, been about us trying harder and trying to be a good person and all of that. And as soon as I said that today, it was like, yeah. Um, Give us wisdom. You have more for us. I pray for more in each of our individual lives. I pray for more in our church. I pray for more in our community, for more in our state, for more in our nation, for more in our world. Spirit, move us, change us, transform us, teach us, guide us, remind us of all that Jesus taught and said and work in us and through us. 
Give us wisdom of these things. May we surrender to you. In Jesus' name, amen.